Hey everyone, this is Dallas Clements, K7DCC. I'm here to give you a short video on my APRS rig in my vehicle. I've been playing around with APRS for a little over a year now and I've tried a lot of different things. Uh, if you want to see some of the experiments that I've done, the tinkering I've done in APRS, nothing extremely innovative, but maybe some uh, good poor man APRS solutions, check out uh, wcares.org. That's the Williamson County Amateur Radio Emergency Service.org. If you go under the Special Interest tab, there is a section for APRS, and there are several articles in there on um, uh, setting up APRS systems, either mobile, at your house, or in your vehicle, and hopefully you'll find some useful information there. But I've tried several different things, and I decided one day that I wanted a setup in my vehicle that would uh, remain on all the time, so that uh, as soon as I got in the vehicle, I didn't have to turn anything on, I didn't have to do anything, didn't have to, nothing, just start driving. And I would see all the objects on the APRS RF side that had been transmitted in the minutes or half hour before I even got in the vehicle. So my map was always populated, whether I was jumping in and out for errands or having just woken up in the morning, just jumped in the car, I'd always have that coverage and that situational awareness of what was going on in my area. So what does this system consist of? Well, three major things. One, I have an old smartphone here, no longer has service. I don't, I don't pay for coverage on it anymore. I'm basically using it as a small computer. I'm using it as a tablet that doesn't have cell phone service, essentially, at this time. Um, I'm using it for its Bluetooth capabilities, its GPS, its touchscreen, and its uh, software processing power. Now, this Bluetooth phone is, or I'm sorry, this, uh, this smartphone is running a program called APRS Droid. I'm a big fan of it. Whether you do this project or not, if you have a droid of some sort, um, whether it be a tablet or a phone, doesn't matter, you need to download APRS Droid if you're an amateur radio operator. It's a great program and definitely want to support that developer. You take that program and I'm Bluetoothing from this phone to a TNC in my trunk. This TNC is made by a company called MobiLinked. It's the MobiLinked Bluetooth TNC. Also, something I can highly recommend after trying a lot of different options, settled on what I think is the best. Very small, very lightweight. You can take it backpacking with you. It's got an internal battery on it that can last it for a couple days. In this particular setup, that's not as important to me. Really, what I want is the simplicity, um, the reliability, and the Bluetooth connection. Because between here and there, I've got no wires to transmit the information. Um, it, it's all Bluetooth from the front of my car to the back of my car. Now, in the back of my car, I'll show you this in a moment. I've got that MobiLink TNC hooked up to a radio. You could hook it up to any radio. In my case, I'm using a Kenwood TM281 Alpha. So let's look in the trunk and see what powers this system. Now I've removed the safety strap that keeps the battery locked down to the uh, floor. In case I get in an accident, I don't want this heavy battery propelling through the back seat. But uh, here it is pulled out where it's a little bit easier to reach. You see I've used a milk crate here because that was convenient convenient for mounting and sturdy enough that I can pick up the whole thing without worrying about the bottom falling out. You see the Kenwood TM281 Alpha is strapped to the side of the uh, milk crate. You see back here in the corner there's the early generation MobiLinked Bluetooth TNC. No case on that one. It's also zip tied to the outside of the crate. Obviously you see the Marine battery, deep cycle battery in the back, and then this simple piece of wood spray painted black from another iteration I had done of this particular setup. Features a couple things. Right here you've got a uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, uh, USB chargers. One of them through this cable is going all the way to the front of the vehicle to power the cell phone, or I should say the smartphone that's being used for uh, APR Stroid. This other cable goes back there to the MobiLinked Bluetooth TNC. And then uh, you got some Anderson power poles that help run the radio and a couple other things back here. And then back here, the very back, you've got this West Mountain Radio ISO power. 
and you see right here the green lights off that means it's not receiving any power from the front of the vehicle when it's in this state this block basically cuts off this whole setup from the rest of the vehicle that keeps from draining my battery in the front of the vehicle power switch can turn the whole thing off if I want to uh, see I, I just removed this cable and I've disconnected it from the vehicle I can take this milk crate out set it on the uh, set it on the ground run other radios from it um, set up for field day that's the other thing I like about this I can just pick this thing up and go I always know that the battery is going to be if not fully charged um, very charged way, way I can check to see what the status is I put this little uh, switch right here this little button hold it down and it'll tell me what the charge of the battery is after a second 12.35 volts so it's a uh, nice little setup for more than just APRS work in the vehicle it's mobile power for me it's a battery box for me back there behind the wires you can't see it is the fuse block and I've got each of these Anderson power poles is on its own fuse depending on what I plan on using that set of Anderson power poles for whether it's a radio or um, of course the USB and the 12 volt they're also on that block so try to set it up to be safe in addition to the fuses back here if you follow this cable back up to the front of the vehicle there's also fuses on both sides up there in case um, something happens the line gets crushed and a short develops so that's the setup here in the back I can look down and just glance and see where I am on the map, just like you do with your normal GPS. I see a map, I see my boat location in the middle of the map, and I, I see all the other icons of other stations right now. I see nine other, um, nine other vehicles that are in simplex range of me right now, as long as I know their frequency. Now, clicking on a particular vehicle can tell me more about uh, that particular object tell me what the frequency in this case I can see that the person's monitoring the national calling frequency uh, I click on another and I see that they're on the local county repeater so I fire up the radio which is just below your line of sight turn it on flip over to that frequency and I can engage that person in conversation call them by call sign I see their call sign here I know who I'm talking to Looking at the screen, we can see several people out and about in the Nashville and some points south of Nashville going down 840. The map you're looking at right now is not the default map that you see when you're working with APRS Droid. Instead, I have loaded offline street maps, often referred to online as OSM. The nice thing about OSM is that I don't have to have an internet connection for this phone to maintain detailed graphics of... Uh, of any of the areas that I might drive. In fact, let's zoom in. Let's show off offline street maps while we're at it. Obviously with APRS Droid you get trails based off where people have been historically. Uh, immensely helpful when you're uh, meeting up with people that uh, also have APRS in their vehicles. Zoom in further and you start to see that there's some practical application to having this car, this in your car, beyond just tracking other objects, radio objects. You've just got a really good quality map available with uh, street level names, points of interest. Now, some of the other useful objects that you can find in APRS, besides the vehicles that we see that are out and about on this Friday morning, I see. Um, I see a tower in Nashville, so if I'm driving through Nashville, I'm not familiar with the area, definitely don't know what the repeater frequencies are, having APRS and more specifically having uh, this kind of information displayed will let me know there is a repeater on 443.450 and the tone is 107. So that's very useful. Now let's look at some of the menu options that you have available to you. So on my phone I'm hitting menu and I get six options that show up. We'll go through them one by one. This is the hub. This is the main reason that I have my phone set up in a portrait mode instead of landscape mode, because I personally find this information 
a little more useful in portrait. On this screen, if I switch it over to landscape, uh, I would only see maybe three entries with portrait. In this particular case, based off the number of lines that are being transmitted, I see three, four, five, almost six. So that's more useful to me. The other reason that I've got my phone set up on portrait mode is because when I look at the map, most of the um, populated areas, most of the areas that I travel are oriented north-south between Nashville and points south on I-65 and sometimes points south on I-24. So that's why I have it in a portrait mode. Going back to my menu options, show log. This lets me know the raw packet data that's coming in. In fact, just received another packet in there from Whiskey One Alpha Romeo November dash one. And then I can see the path by which that particular packet got to me. It looks like it was digipeded by November Tango 4 Uniform X-Ray dash one, which is uh, not uncommon for where I'm at right now. See all the other packets I've received. The gray packets are packets that I've heard and then if I go down far enough, these are the packets I've transmitted. And because my APRS setup is not uh, tied into the radio that I listen to on voice, I lose the capability of being able to automatically transmit over APRS one of my current frequencies. That is something I do wish I had that uh, I'm a little jealous of the people that are running around with some of the Kenwoods like the D700s or uh, some of the other models are able to do. But uh, for the price and for the other capabilities I get for the price, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. In fact, it's, it, it may be the best setup that you can have capabilities-wise for the price. And um, I'm just very happy with it. That's why I'm doing the video. So, go back to menu. We already looked at the log, messages. So this is where you start to pull ahead of radios that, are, that don't have... Uh, a visual component to it or an input component to it. You know, yes, you can send out your text messages through radios like the uh, Kenwood TM uh, D700, but uh, it's, it's going to be a little more difficult. I'll show you what I mean. Send message to, um, I'm not going to put in the call sign. I don't need to for this example, but you see it right there. As I get ready to enter in information, I've got the same type of virtual keyboard that you would have if you were on your Android tablet or your phone in any other application. And that is a lot easier for me to enter than I think most of the APRS units that are available out there today. It's just one of the places that APRS Droid really shines. All right, so back to menu. And we're not gonna stop tra uh, tracking. We're going to keep transmitting single shot. I don't need to update my location here, so let's see what our, our more options are. Don't need any of those. We'll go back to show hub. The hub shows us who's closest to us right now. This uh, was not clear to me when I first got APRS Droid. I didn't understand the rhyme or reason, even though it was very obvious uh, now looking back on it. I thought this would populate at the order which I received packets no that's how the log works but not the hub the hub shows you who's closest to you right now based off their last transmitted location so obviously I will always be at the top of the list in my vehicle uh, and then after that I'm parked in my driveway so you see the eye gate that I run out of my house and then a nearby digipeter a vehicle this is an old packet so it's grayed out and let me know that it's not terribly current but it's not old enough that it has completely dropped off the screen. Then you got another digipeter, another eye gate, um, and then we go on and on and on. And this goes back to what I talked about earlier about having local information available. I think this is a good selling feature for APRS, especially when you're going on trips. Uh, this is um, an object set up to represent the location of a voice repeater in Williamson County, and it has a very rich comment field in here. It tells us what the frequency is, 443.875, the tone, 107, the offset, who owns it, um, and then what time we have uh, net calls, Monday nights at 7 p.m. every week. So, very useful to me. I, I love the graphical component. I think G5 ILO said it best when he said APRS puts ham radio on the map. 
and I think that describes it describes very well what APRS brings to the table. And I like this functionality to be able to drive down the road, see I'm coming up on somebody or somebody is uh, coming up behind me. I can start a conversation with them knowing uh, that they're out there. Now, in case you want to set up this configuration using the same radio as I am, uh, the Kenwood TM281 Alpha, up on the screen now you'll see a diagram. This diagram is also available through the Williamson County Amateur Radio Emergency Service webpage. Links below. And with that, I will say goodbye. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. 73's K7DCC clear.